Hello, today I'm going to talk a little bit about colour. We've had lots of emails and um, messages to say that people find this a big challenge when they're choosing their own project. So I just want to start by showing you something from the late 17th century, which is kind of the perfect age for crawl work, <clears throat> when they had access to so many different colours and dyes. And these colours are taken from an immaculate set of bed hangings. Um, and uh, I've seen the back of the also of, of the reverse side of the bed hangings so I can see the original colours and these are the original colours in this piece and you could hardly imagine that you could blend all these colours together but the way we stick them together um, and they, they travel from one colour to the next means that you can shade um, in a very soft shading way, uh, very typical of that era. So I'm going to show you a few things that are quite exciting. Um, <clears throat> You can, of course, just have three different shades in a colour, and that's a very simple, simplistic way of um, creating some soft shading, very beautiful, uh, subtle effects. This is with the grey and the pinks and the purples, and this has been a very good beginner kit. Um, but what I'd like you to be able to do is something a bit more like this, which is the Scottish play. And that has lots of different shading and a great deal of fun. And this is a piece that was created by um, two sisters in Glam's Castle in the 17th and 18th century, because you can see the 18th century style coming through. And I think they took quite a lot of time. And I'm going to show you the colours that come from this one piece, because there are an extraordinary number of colours. And the reason for this is because um, I think that they wanted to have the shading uh, in a very subtle way and it's really playing around blues and greens with a little sparkle of uh, reds and yellows. So there, there's the needles popping out. So you would hardly think that it would take this much wool to create this design. So this is it. Amazing. And there's the magic colour I was talking about in the other video. And when you finish this piece, of course, you'll end up with an awful lot of wool left over. So we've got a project um, that we're going to do very soon, and that is to create a Christmas stocking. And I know that's a thing in America. And I've been wanting to share something with you for quite a while, which is Isabella's stocking. This one. And... I had thought of releasing it as a kit and we do think about these things, but we've never got round to it. But it seems the perfect time to actually uh, show you how to make it yourself. So you can download a design with a unicorn. So you can replace that and miss the uh, horn off if you don't want to have a unicorn. You can make it a horse or you could perhaps look at some other designs from um, in Cruel Work from my website. I don't mind at all if you want to put a lion on, that would be rather fabulous, or a stag like I had for Isabella. But by far the most popular thing, and this is by special request, was the um, from three of the grandchildren, the granddaughters. They want, they definitely want the unicorn. So how am I going to do it if I am in lockdown? Well. I fortunately have a lot of leftover threads and that's what I get when I've made a new design. And I also have leftover threads from everything else. So this is a stash busting little video here. So I'm going to uh, show you what you can use and what I'd like you to do is to find the threads that you love and decide what your colours you're going to use. So. Between now and the next video, if you don't mind, I would like you to find some threads and I'd like you to create families of colours. So if you could um, find a thread that's a dark blue, the next shade down, the next shade down, and just put them around a piece of cloth that you're going to use. And then in the next video, I'll show you how to transfer the design easily, even without a light box or any special equipment. So look for the um, colours that you've got. Those are the same colours there. And look at colours that would just blend across easily together. So either in a different colour, but the same strength, or shading down through the same colour like this, <clears throat> darker to paler, paler to darker, 
or going, as I say, into another type of green there. That doesn't go at all. Chuck out anything you don't like. Don't put anything on that you don't like and bring in a few magic contrast colours. Now, when you're choosing these colours, don't choose them on a black kitchen top because that will look totally wrong. Don't choose them on white, white piece of paper. I always think people, I watch people in needlework shops and they're choosing colours and they're putting them onto a white top, which is bizarre because actually you want it to have a relationship with the linen colour behind. So see how different that looks when it has uh, linen behind it to the paper. Anyway, I think that's probably enough for today, but um, if you'd like to join me again, we'll be uh, transferring a design onto the linen.